Welcome to volume four of our gambling protection video series. In the next hour, you will learn how to protect yourself from being cheated in any private game played with dice. We'll take a close look at the many types of crooked dice. You'll see how these gaff dice are made, how they work, and the test used to detect them. You'll see just how easy it is for dice cheaters to switch these crooked dice in and out of play. We'll expose the methods used to cheat with legitimate dice, such as controlled dice shots. We'll then examine in detail how cheating with the dice cup takes place and see how these techniques apply to some of the more popular games played with the cup, such as backgammon and liar's dice. Finally, throughout the video, you'll see a number of protection tips and the telltale signs needed to help you detect the various gaffes and methods. We begin cheating at dice volume four by taking a look at a collection of crooked dice. Here we see over 300 pairs of crooked dice. Flats, tops, weights, caps, and edge work are just a few of the gambler's nicknames used to describe the many different types of crooked dice that you see. Almost every color and every size needed to match any pair of legitimate dice. We see a number of dice cups, both legitimate and gaffed. Also, you see some of the equipment used to test dice for their fairness. As you can see, Professional dice cheaters can come extremely well equipped for almost any situation. Let's begin with an expose on their favorite tool of the trade, crooked dice. Just how many different types of crooked dice are there and where and how are they obtained? Let's look through the pages of an old, obsolete gambling catalog. The catalog advertises almost every type of crooked dice and related gambling equipment imaginable. But due to our new federal laws, these catalogs are no longer available. And the gambling supply house that advertised this equipment is no longer in business. I should warn you, though, that all of these crooked dice and equipment are still available through the various channels in any large city in the United States. Our first pair of gaff dice to look at are called flats. Flats are dice that have been shaved on one or more sides and fall into the category of outside work. Outside work simply means to alter the exterior of the die to affect its trueness. Here's a couple of celluloid cubes. The green die has been shaved on top, the red one on the right side. This close-up view of a pair of flats clearly exposes their shape. Any side that is shaved becomes the favorite side because of the larger surface area. The most popular combination is known as six ace flats. These dice will produce more aces, ace sixes, and twelves than probability dictates. The fastest and simplest test to detect flats is simply to put the dice together and rub your thumb across the top. Give one die a quarter turn in each direction and continue the thumb test. This test will easily detect the discrepancy. The next type of gaff dice also fall into the category of outside work. They are known as bevels. And as you can see from this close-up shot, the dice are simply shaped to help them roll off the beveled sides. The easiest test for bevels is to simply put the two dice together and to test them by rocking them. This test is quick and will spot any discrepancy in the outside of the die. A die beveled on the ace makes the die roll off the ace and makes it difficult or almost impossible for the six to show. Sometimes, flats and bevels are combined to produce stronger results. The micrometer is a precision instrument capable of testing a die's trueness to thousands of an inch. 
The micrometer will instantly detect any flats or bevels. This equipment is used on a day-to-day -day basis in casinos throughout the world to test their dice. Casino dice are guaranteed to be true to one ten thousandth of an inch. We've looked at flats and bevels. Here's another form of outside work called edge work. The edges on dice can be finished in many styles, such as the razor edge, feather turn, or round corner. One thing is for sure, all edges should be identical. A close look at the dice here show that the edges have been shaved at different angles. The 45 degree angle is on the legitimate die. The 60 degree angle is on the crooked die and will alter the die's trueness. If a die has a 60 degree angle on all four edges of the six, the number six would be heavily favored. Flats, bevels, and edge work are percentage dice and will produce a strong advantage for the cheater. But the favorite dice used by professional cheaters are called tees or tops and are 100% guaranteed to win all the money. Tops are simply misspotted dice. And at first, you may assume that this type of gaff dice would be very easy to detect. Yet, the dice are perfect cubes, and the rolls appear natural. The discrepancy goes unnoticed simply because you can only see three sides of a die at one time. With the help of a mirror, we will look at the various combinations of tops, beginning with a combination known as ace four fives. These dice will only throw twos, fives, sixes, eights, nines, and tens, and are known as passers. The deuce tray sixes are another passing combination that can only make fours, fives, sixes, eights, nines, and twelves. Here an ace tray five combined with a deuce four six will produce odd numbers and is known as a miss out combination. This pair cannot make a four six, eight, or ten. The deuce tray six and ace four five cannot make the points five or nine. Another miss out combination. These dice are simply known as the double deuce and double five and are only misspotted on one side of the die. To detect any combination of tops, just add the numbers on the top and bottom of each die. They must always equal seven. Beneath every six should be an ace. Beneath the five should be a deuce. And on the bottom of every tray should be a four. Loaded dice are commonly referred to as weight by professional cheaters. Dice can be weighted to favor hundreds of combinations, all depending on the game. All loaded dice begin with the celluloid or plastic cube. The spots are then drilled in preparation for the loads. Lead, platinum, amalgam, and even gold can be used to load dice. Some time back, even mercury was used as a movable load. The mercury slowly shifted from one side of the die to the other, inside a hidden channel. Let's take a close look at a semi-transparent die. Upon close observation, the slugs are easily detectable. These same loads in a darker shade of celluloid or an opaque die would go unnoticed. And it's for this reason that you almost always find transparent dice being used in legalized casinos.
This die is known as a dead ace and has 12 different spots that are loaded. This die is virtually guaranteed to fall on the ace. Here's another transparent die in which some spots have been drilled deeper and weighted. Although this discrepancy may seem obvious at first glance, when the die is rolling around and bouncing off a backboard during an exciting crap game, it's very difficult to detect. Here the cheater has only weighted the spots in the center of the die and has stayed away from spots on the edges, hoping to go unnoticed. Here's the test to use if you suspect loaded dice. It's called the pivot test. You simply take the die between the first finger and thumb and give it a quarter turn. Move the die around to the various combinations and continue to shift it. If the die is loaded, you'll feel the weight. Here's another way to test for loaded dice. This is called a balancer. First we spin a legitimate die. You can see the spin is even and true. Now let's take a die that has been loaded. The uneven rocking motion quickly exposes the gaft. The balancer can be purchased in any gambling supply house, which by the way, usually fronts for crooked gambling supply distributors. Crooked dice are usually purchased in sets. In this set, these two dice favor the five tray and the five ace, and will produce fours, sixes, eights, and tens. This is the passing combination. If I take out the tray five and switch in a die that only favors the deuce, called a splitter, I now have a miss out combination that will show more ace deuces and sevens than normal. With almost every set of crooked dice you get, you find two matching dice known as fronts. This particular opaque set has been weighted heavily with amalgam. In addition, the dice have been beveled to help roll off shaped sides onto flattened sides. The flat side on the five means that the deuce is heavily favored. And this dice is commonly referred to as a dead deuce. Some dice do not come with a razor edge, and therefore the pivot test becomes difficult. If you suspect a weighted die, simply hold the drugstore type die above a glass of water and drop it. If the die is loaded, as in this case, the deuce will show literally all of the time. This is the test to use for any dice in the drugstore variety. One last and very old method of detecting loaded dice was to simply burn the die. After a few minutes, all that would remain were the slugs and provided positive proof. Finally, we take a look at magnetic dice. These are dice that are controlled with hidden bar magnets on the person or direct current from an electromagnet. The results are 100% guaranteed. Here the dice have been gaffed to land on the 5, 6, or 11 combination. In just a second, we'll turn the magnet to the other side, reverse the polarity, and now the dice are favored to fall in the ace-deuce combination. These small bar magnets can be attached to the thigh, strapped on with an ace bandage, and present no problems for controlling dice through a bar or tabletop for most dice games. Electromagnets can be turned off and on with hidden switches and have been known to be built into concrete walls, floors, pool tables, 
and almost any other type of playing surface used for dice games. Any place using an electromagnet to cheat at dice are known as juice joints. Here's the protection tips. These tips will help you detect the gaff dice you've just seen. Remember the thumb test is the easiest way to detect flats. Taking two dice together in a rocking fashion will detect bevels. Close observation in a strong light is the easiest way to detect if the angle of the edge is perfectly cut or biased. The quickest way to detect any combination of tops is to simply add up the spots on both the top and bottom. Remember that the top and bottom of any legitimate die must equal seven. The pivot test can be used to detect loaded dice. Simply hold the die between the thumb and first finger and gently give it a quarter turn to feel for the weight. With dice that do not have the razor edge, simply take the die and drop it into a glass of water to detect the load. To detect magnetic dice may require a small magnet of your own and even small hand compasses have been used to pick up magnetic fields. Let's now take a look at some of the dice switches used to switch these crooked dice in and out of games. Thumb switches represent the most common method of switching dice. In all of the following dice switches, we'll simply be using red and white dice to help expose the moves. As you can see, the thumb switch takes only a split second. Notice the hand takes on a very natural appearance with the fingers spread after the switch. Professional dice cheaters can execute the thumb switch with either the right or left hand, and the move has many variations. Once again, at regular speed, an expose of the thumb switch simply shows that as the gaff dice are released, the legitimate dice are locked in between the palm and thumb. Usually in a private game, after a switch is executed, money is placed in that hand to conceal the legitimate dice. Till it is time to take the crooked dice back out of the game. Here's another variation of the thumb switch. Only this time, money is used in the opposite hand to help shade the move. The switch takes place under cover this player passing the dice to the shooter. The cheater usually gets players accustomed to this manner of passing the dice and will not attempt to switch until this action is accepted. Then the move can be attempted with complete safety. As you can see, this switch is extremely deceptive and very clean. Once again, this is simply another variation of the thumb switch. Finally, one last example. This time, the thumb switch takes place, only the dice are dropped into a dice cup. As you can see, this particular switch has many variations in many different situations that are applicable to almost any game. A much more difficult switch is known as the palm switch. And although thumb switches and palm switches look very much alike from this angle, the mechanics are quite different. Palm switches are very rarely attempted by amateurs. This is a professional's move because of the many hours needed to master the technique. Here's a close-up shot of a couple of palm switches. All of these switches take only a split second. 
which means that if you're busy making a bet or reaching for a drink, you have no chance whatsoever to pick up the move. The truth is, even if you're watching and the move is demonstrated by an expert, it's very difficult to detect. The expose clearly exposes the action. You can see the starting position of the gaff dice. The legitimate dice must bypass the gaffs, get locked into palm position. The gaff dice are released and the switch is executed. A very common action used to disguise many dice switches is that of going to the mouth to blow on the dice as if for good luck. Cackling the dice and shaking them also helps add to the illusion. Here we see another variation of the palm switch just described from over the shoulder angle. In slow motion, you can see exactly how and when the switch takes place. Finally, we end up with the legitimate dice locked into a palm position. Now let's take a look at what's commonly referred to as the money switch. Money is the most common prop used to help shade dice switches during private dice games. The switch actually takes place under the cover of the money in the left hand. The cheater apparently fades a $300 bet, passes the dice to a shooter, and it's at this instant the switch occurs. The expose clearly shows the starting position of the gaff dice and how the switch is executed. Once again, in slow motion. Here's another very common money switch. Although this switch is a very simple hand-to-hand -hand exchange, it's the counting of the cash and the bet that's made that helps disguise the move. Cackling and shaking the dice always helps add to the illusion and deceptiveness of any dice switch. The legitimate dice are never really tossed into the throwing hand. The crooked dice were always there to begin with. The coat switch is one of the most difficult dice switches I know. It is only attempted by professional dice cheaters. As you can see, after the switch, the hand is completely clean, and this is what makes the coat switch so deceptive. Here we get a closer look at the move. The dice are instantly switched in a split second. Our expose will clearly expose the action. The gaff dice are originally palmed. The legitimate dice are simply tossed into the open coat. Gaff dice are shaken, tossed, and the coat switch is completed. A piece of cloth known as a web is usually pinned to the inside of a jacket to help catch the legitimate dice. Please remember that in all switches that you are seeing, the moves are demonstrated over and over again. But in real life, one or two switches in an entire night's play is sufficient to win most of the money. Sometimes it is not necessary for a dice cheater to switch both dice and only the exchange of one die can produce a very favorable advantage. Here are some switches that do just that. What we just witnessed was another variation of the thumb switch, only this time the one die is exchanged. One die switches usually take place when a splitter needs to be kicked into a game. A splitter is a die that when switched in turns a passing combination into a miss-out combination. As you can see, the expose is a simplified version of the thumb switch. Here's a one-die switch that takes place during a tapping action. 
Once again, the cheater must get the other players accustomed to this awkward style of passing the dice before a switch like this can be attempted. The expose clearly shows the action. Be assured that the switching of only one die is a tremendous advantage and very difficult to overcome. Dice switches are generally very difficult to detect when executed by experts. Watch for the telltale signs before the switch, such as a player frequently going into the pocket for gum, cigarettes, or money. You should also watch for players continuously counting the money from hand to hand. The protection tips are as follows. Review this section as many times as necessary to familiarize yourself with the positions of the hands necessary to thumb palm and regular palm dice. Remember, the natural actions of blowing on the dice and cackling them are very commonly used to help shade switches. Any switch can be continued by simply dropping the dice into a dice cup. The cup can also be used as shade to help conceal the dice before and after the switch takes place. Cash is the most commonly used prop in a private dice game. Money can be used to help disguise the switch as well as conceal the dice after a switch is executed. Even switching one die is a tremendous advantage for any cheater. And finally, the most difficult, sophisticated switch that you've viewed is the coat switch. Just believing that it is possible is your best protection. Is it possible to control two legitimate dice? I'm afraid the answer is yes and we use a homemade miniature crab table to demonstrate some of the basics. First, let's take a look at what's commonly referred to as the whip shot. In all of the following controlled dice shots, we will be attempting to control two sixes. As we watch the whip shot again, notice that the dice are picked up and apparently shaken before the toss. As you can see, the two sixes are once again controlled. Now let's view the same technique, only this time in slow motion. If you watch closely, you will see that lateral control in both dice is the key. The whip shot does not allow the dice to turn end for end. In our final slow motion expose, notice how the strong spinning action prevents the dice from tumbling when they hit the layout. The speed and spin just forces the die to dig into the layout and slide. To accomplish any controlled dice shot, both dice must first be picked up and set with both sixes facing upward. The two dice are gripped in a manner that enables them to move around and make contact with one another but are not allowed to turn over. This gives the appearance and sounds as if both dice are legitimately being shaken, yet both sixes remain uppermost. This time, let's take the whip shot one step further. The exact same technique, only now both dice will continue into a couple of banks or cushions. Throwing the whip shot into some type of backboard does not change the technique. There are many surfaces and walls that will work with this type of controlled dice shot. There are also many that will not. Underneath the surface that you now view is about a quarter of an inch of newspaper. This allows the dice to literally die and provide some give in the layout. As you can see, the walls have been covered with a soft, spongy cushion. And this also facilitates the move. You can bet that the table or the playing surface is well prepared in advance with the ideal wall or backboard. Also, remember cheaters have many hours to practice on these ideal conditions before playing time.
once again in slow motion the whip shot into two cushions to complete control of two sixes. Here we take a closer look at the spinning action. The move is only executed with one die. Lateral control from the die spinning evenly off the fingers is all that is necessary to control the six with this type of table. I've also seen the same type of whipping action take place on glass and billiard tables, which is basically a thin layer of green felt on a piece of slate. These surfaces have no give at all, but the spinning action and lateral control can still take place. I've even seen the whip shot thrown into concrete walls and still get favorable results. Just remember that almost any surface or type of wall or backboard is adaptable to some form of controlled dice shot. I even know of a few dice tables that were designed and built with the sole purpose of making possible a controlled dice shot. What you're about to see has been nicknamed the helicopter shot. This shot is executed in exactly the same manner as a whip shot, only the shot is thrown quite some distance from the playing surface with much greater height. In the big money dice games, it's not uncommon that certain demands be met by the shooter to ensure a fair and random roll. One is that both dice must be thrown off some backboard or wall. And two, the shooter must step back a few feet from the playing surface and throw the dice up in the air, usually over a thin piece of string. This ensures that the dice are not slid down the surface. As you can see, with both the whip shot being thrown into two and three cushions and the helicopter shot, both countermeasures do not completely stop professional dice cheaters. Here we get to view the helicopter shot one final time in slow motion. As you can see, once again, complete control. Both dice produces two sixes. The pad roll is probably the oldest controlled dice shot around. It usually takes place on a rug, top of a bed, or a blanket. The idea is simple, to cause the dice to roll end over end like cartwheels. And now the two numbers that are axled off must become impossible to show. In this case, the aces and sixes. The pad roll in this situation can only produce the numbers 2, 3, 4, and 5. Crap shooters can automatically see that this controlled dice shot would make it impossible to crap out on the first roll. It's even possible for the very best cheaters to pick up both dice, axle off the ace and six, and then line up the fours and trays and fives and deuces. If you were to turn both dice now and make quarter turns, you would see that sevens show on all four sides. Now both dice would be tossed with the exact amount of force, and therefore both dice will make the exact number of revolutions, ensuring the shooter must show a seven on the come out roll. Obviously, a cheater with this much ability and skill can virtually win at will. Here's our final slow motion expose, the pad roll. Fall shaking action. The aces and sixes have been axled off. And once again, this controlled dice shot can only produce the numbers two, three, four, and five. The spin shot is very similar to the whip shot in nature, but the mechanics are slightly different. Here we'll bypass the false shaking action and just pick up and control both sixes. 
As you can see, this is a multi-cushion shot. Once again, with controlled dice shots of this type, good lateral control and a strong spinning action is the key. When either the whip shot or the spin shot is thrown with a fair amount of force into a cushion or wall, the spinning action is very authentic and becomes very difficult to detect the fact that the dice are not turning over. Here we see the shot executed in slow motion. It's important to realize that these dice are not slid, but actually tossed about three to four inches above the playing surface. This greatly aids to the illusion that these dice are tumbling. Even in slow motion, a controlled dice shot of this nature seems almost out of the question. The dice are picked up, tossed into three cushions with a lot of bounce and action, yet complete control of both sixes is achieved. Now let's take a look at the spin shot from a back view. Although the spin shot, helicopter shot, and whip shot follow the same principles, it is the surface or backboard or playing table that provide the biggest giveaway. If you decide to participate in any game played with dice, always check the playing surface. Anytime the surface has a little give to it, beware. If the operators of that game truly wanted the dice to bounce and get real randomness, there would be no reason to soften up the playing surface. Also, take a close look at the backboards. Are they specially designed with a rubber backing or cushion? Both of these materials provide good backboards for executing multi-cushion controlled dice shots. Once again, we see the control of two sixes. Finally, let's isolate the spinning action as we watch the spin shot executed with one die. Look at the action and bounce this die is getting. It truly appears to be a random roll. As you can see, the lateral control is still maintained, once again controlling the six. Let's take a look at some protection tips. With most variations of the whip shot, look for the shooter to be setting the dice on specific numbers. Also, take the playing surface and the material on the backboards into consideration. After setting the dice, the cheater must fall, shake, or cackle them. Remember, the dice can be thrown up and over a string or other object and still be controlled as in the helicopter shot. Always watch for the pad roll with its cartwheel effect. This can take place on any blanket, bed, or rug. Last but not least, if they demand the shooter to throw the dice off the backboard, remember, does not eliminate anything, and in some cases actually adds to the deceptiveness of controlled dice shots. Let's now discuss some of the methods used for cheating with dice cups. The slick cup is a crooked dice cup used in conjunction with gaff dice. The combination produces strong results and allows the complete control of five dice. Let's say that aces are wild and we're shooting for the highest hand possible. As you can see, a perfect hand of five sixes has been rolled. In most high dice games, such as poker dice, boss or bull dice and Indian dice, the aces are generally considered to be wild. 
The Slick Cup is one of the favorite cheating devices used for games of this type. In order for the Slick Cup to work, all five dice must have edge work on the six and ace sides. It's this biased edge and the strong whipping action that lines up the dice with the aces and sixes uppermost. The edge work on these dice catch the smooth inside finish to the dice cup and through centrifugal force cause the dice to line up in this manner. Here's a close up of the smooth finish inside the dice cup. Here we see two dice, one gaffed and one legitimate. The legitimate die has an edge finished at a 45 degree angle. The edge work on the gaff die maintains a 60 degree angle. Once the smooth interior of the slick cup catches the edge work, it becomes impossible for the dice to turn over due to centrifugal force. The shake is phony and the control is very, very easy. The dice just basically slide around and are not allowed to tumble or roll over. This allows the perfect control of anywhere from one to five dice. Sliding the dice out without tumbling completes the technique. Slick cups can be purchased in crooked gambling supply houses throughout the United States for about $45. Five dice with the necessary edge work would run about another 15. Many cheaters have made a tremendous living off the $60 investment. Although all demonstrations thus far have assumed that aces to be wild, the slick cup and gaff dice can be adopted to almost any game. As an example, 4-5-6 or banker's dice is a high stake dice game played with the cup. For this game, the dice would have to be gaffed to favor the 4-5-6. and six. The Slick Cup is a crooked dice cup that helps you control up to five dice. The Butterfly Cup will help switch dice. Here you're about to see an ultra clean dice switch with the help of a gaffed cup. The white dice go in and in the split second mechanically switched for the gaff dice. This takes very little skill on the cheater's part. Here we watch the entire sequence once again. As we take a closer look, this expose will reveal the action and expose the gaff. It's called a butterfly or movable bottom that actually kicks out the gaff dice and instantly covers the legitimate dice. The action is accomplished by turning the bottom of the cup. This initiates the false bottom and an almost undetectable switch is accomplished. The butterfly cup is generally used by amateur cheaters that have not mastered some of the more difficult hand switches. Butterfly cups are frequently used with four, five, six tops and they often played for high stakes game of backgammon. Four, five, sixes will only make eights, nines, tens, elevens and twelves and produce a lot of doubles. Just imagine playing against a cheater who can mechanically switch in the gaff dice undetectably and produce these types of numbers at will. The butterfly cup can be devastating. Butterfly cups always come with a front. A front is a legitimate cup that matches perfectly the gaff cup. Well, you see how easy it is to cheat with crooked dice cups. But what happens when the dice cup is legitimate and the dice are legitimate also? Here's a series of cheating techniques that deals with legitimate cups and dice. The first technique, known as holding out, will control just one die. For ease and understanding, the one die that is being manipulated and controlled is white. And let's once again assume for the time being that the aces are wild. Being controlled one ace is a tremendous advantage and will produce many strong hands. Once again, we see the guaranteed control of just the one ace. This time we watch the same sequence from another angle. Here we see the guaranteed control of one ace produces a hand 
of four aces to four kicker. This is a very simple holding out technique that can be mastered by almost any cheater in a short period of time. The expose will show that the white die is never dropped into the cup but held out in the right hand with the ace facing upwards. The left hand shakes the cup with the four remaining dice, turns the cup and dumps to the table. The right hand, as you will see, will, comes in and loads the ace under the cup as the outcome is displayed. Once again, this is a very simple technique. Let's take a look at a more difficult version of holding out. And once again, the cheater will be controlling just one ace. Watch closely and you will see that the action of all five dice coming out of the inside of the cup is very deceptive. Let's watch the move once again. As we take a closer look at this technique, not only is one die being held out, but it is also being transferred to the other hand before the toss. Here we watch the move from another angle. And in this example, you'll see the control will produce a hand a four fours, a powerful hand that is tough to beat when you throw in five dice on the square. This time we'll find a stop action view to help clearly expose what's taking place here. As you can see at this point, the white die is actually behind the dice cup. This is the die that just a second ago was being held out and transferred to this position. From this angle, you can see how the die is locked into a palm position and concealed on the outside of the cup during the shaking action. The expose will also show how it's transferred to the left hand the ace is naturally placed on the table with the ace upward. Other four dice will come randomly out of the cup and the ace is placed down. This is a very deceptive holding out technique when done properly. Here's a combination of a holding out technique and a controlled dice shot. Only two dice are used, and again, the object is control one die to land on an ace. The pickup and shake and entire control is achieved with only one hand. This gives the technique a very casual and natural appearance. Here we watch the move from another angle. Once again, the cheater has controlled one die to land on an ace. This move is called a topper by cheaters because the entire control takes place on the top of the cup. Although you can't hear the dice shaking, they are actually making contact and the sound is authentic. As we expose the action, you will see that the first die is legitimately tossed into the cup. It's the second die, our white die, that is being held out on the lip or the top of the cup. Both dice are allowed to make contact to simulate the sound of the dice shaking. The move is simply completed with a sliding action of the ace and a legitimate toss of the other die. Here's another variation of a holding out technique combined with the slide move. What makes this method unique is that both dice are actually tossed from inside the cup. 
Watch the sequence again to see if you can detect any false moves. What's ironic to point out is that dice cuffs were designed to stop controlled dice shots. And what's really happening in these scenarios is the cup is adding to the shot's deceptiveness. Once again, two dice and the cheater is guaranteed complete control of one ace. As we watch the expose, the ace is once again held out, but this time with a different method. On the last shaking action, the ace is allowed to fall back into the cup, and both dice are slid out in that position. This time the expose in slow motion. You can see the position of the held out die. This die is allowed to slide back into the cup and complete control is maintained by completing the shot with a slide. To show you just how far some of these ideas can be taken, we'll expose a technique that controls two dice. The two dice will be held out during the shaking action and controlled as the dice are dumped to the table. We watch the same move again and you can see how the two dice are held out on the back side of the cup completely hidden from the other players views. A transfer now takes place. The cup is dumped to the table and the two aces controlled. Holding out doubles is a very difficult cheating technique, and the chance of running into a cheater capable of executing these moves are very slim. We share these ideas and techniques to make you aware of the possibilities. As we watch the scenario from another angle, one interesting note is that about the only popular private game played with dice that does not use the dice cup is the private version or street game of craps. Almost all other dice games use the cup. Backgammon, liar's dice, high dice, boss, aces up, aces in the middle, and four, five, six are just a few of the games being played in this country where the dice cup is used. The problem is is that all private games where dice are tossed from a dice cup tend to give players a false sense of security. As you can see, the feeling should be quite the opposite. The dump shot just may be the most deceptive technique used with legitimate dice and a legitimate dice cup. Watch closely to see if you can detect the white die being controlled. Ace up. Once again, all four dice are tossed from the inside of the cup with a very strong, aggressive dumping action. Here we take a look at the dump shot from a front view. What prevents the ace from not turning over and tumbling them to one of the other sides is the secret behind the dump shot. As you can see, the shot has produced a roll of three sixes. As we watch the sequence once again, it's the killing action of the other dice that make this shot possible. This is a very deceptive cheating technique. To isolate this killing action, we take two dice, one white and one red. This expose will clearly show how the red die completely kills the white die, prevents it from tumbling or turning over. This is the killing action that makes the dump shot possible and so difficult to detect. Imagine these dice coming from the inside of a dice cup in exactly the same manner.
As we expose the move, the dump shot begins with the holding out of the white die. This die is allowed to slide back into the cup, and as you can see, the die is killed and the ace is controlled. The dumping action is extremely deceptive and is taken in many knowledgeable gamblers. A control of any type, when the dice are tossed from the cup in this fashion, seems almost out of the question. Almost all amateur dice cheaters rely on crooked dice and gaff dice cups. A true professional relies on his manipulative skills and can take a move like the dump shot, perfect it, and make a very comfortable living. Here you see the position of the dice just before the dump shot is completed. And as we watch the shot continue, we will stop the action to clearly show the killing effect of the other dice. The dump shot is a very powerful technique and has won more money than any other cheater's methods utilizing legitimate cups and dice. Liar's Dice, one of the most popular bar games played with dice on the West Coast, is a game that requires a great deal of psychology and skill both which can be overcome by a couple of very simple cheaters moves. Fans of this game know that in some variation of Liar's Dice, a lot of bluffing takes place, and the ability to change a hand at will can be an unbeatable advantage. Here the player is rolled three threes with the five six kicker. The hand can remain the same or instantly be changed, all depending on the opponent's play. Here you just saw three threes instantly turn into four of a kind. As we watch the move again, notice that the technique is accomplished solely with one hand. It simply appears as if the cup is being removed to display the total. Let's expose the action. First, the cup is removed and then covers the dice in the usual manner. Bluffing takes place at this time and if the cheater needs to change the total of his hand, a simple quarter turn of one die under cover of removing the cup is all that is necessary. The move is extremely simple, but very powerful. Three threes with the five six kicker instantly turns into four of a kind. Let's now take a look at another technique that will also instantly change the total of any hand. In this role, we see another way in which the players commonly conceal their hand from their opponents during the bluffing stage. As you can see, the player has rolled two sixes, two threes with the deuce kicker. If a change is necessary, one simple move can turn the two threes and two sixes into a full house. Here the move is repeated. Once again, two pairs is turned into a full house in a split second. A close-up expose shows that the cup is used to give the die a quarter turn. It takes just a split second and is automatic. As you can see, the ace was instantly turned into a five. With moves this deceptive and clean, sometimes knowledge of these techniques may be your only protection. These two simple moves would destroy any game of liar's dice and provide an unbeatable advantage for any cheater. Finally, we take a look at a couple of moves used for the fast action, high stakes game of backgammon. As you can see by the board position, white desperately needs a six on one die to send the black piece back to the bar and virtually guarantee the win. The player is a backgammon cheater and has controlled a six with the help of our old friend, the dump shot. What makes this backgammon dump shot different 
is that the die is never held out on the outside of the cup. Both dice are actually placed inside the cup and given a legitimate shake. So how is it that the white die stays in the necessary position needed to execute a dump shot? It's the dice cup itself that provides the control. And as you will now see, this cup and most backgammon cups have enough give in the material to accomplish what's known as a squeeze control. Neither die is allowed to turn around or tumble with the squeezing action. The cup can now be aggressively shaken, yet the white die is still under control. The dump shot is now executed to control the six. Once again, we view the dump shot and squeeze control, only this time in slow motion. Backgammon is one of the most popular board games played in this country. The game features many national tournaments and backgammon clubs. All this really means is that there are many opportunities for the professional dice cheater to practice his trade. Here we see the squeezing action in slow motion. In this final slow motion expose, we will stop the action to show you the killing effect of the dump shot. The squeeze control and dump shot are two powerful cheater's techniques. This is a combination of moves you should always be on the lookout for. In our final scenario, we show you another one of the most deceptive moves used to cheat at backgammon. Once again, the same board position. White needs a six to send the black piece back to the bar. As you can see, both dice are tossed from inside the cup, forcefully against the center bar, yet the six is easily controlled. Here the same sequence of moves are repeated. Watch closely as both dice genuinely come from inside the cup. The move is basically a variation of the dump shot. Here we isolate the action of just how the die kills the six against the bar and prevents it from tumbling. The killing action, as you can see, is extremely deceptive and truly looks as if the dice are randomly tossed into the bar. Here the action is isolated in slow motion. Here you see a stop action shot showing the position of the die as it is killed. Finally we see the same sequence of moves from beginning to end in slow motion. This scenario begins with holding out and positioning the white die. It is held out during the shaking action and on the final shake allowed to slide back into the cup with the six facing upward. A slide shot into the bar completes the move. When these moves are done by experts, they are as close to being undetectable as cheaters techniques can be. We complete volume four of our gambling protection series with some protection tips for cheating with dice cups. We saw how the control of up to five dice was possible with the help of a slick cup. A smooth interior finish must be combined with edge work on the dice. The butterfly cup will mechanically switch dice in a split second. The switch must be initiated by turning the bottom half of the cup. The easiest way to cheat with legitimate cups and legitimate dice is some of the holding out techniques that you've seen. Always be on the lookout for the dump shot. It's the most deceptive of all controlled dice shots with the dice cup. 
In the very popular game of Liar's Dice, we showed you how any total could instantly be changed with the hidden quarter turn of any die. Finally, backgammon is the most popular game for cheaters that have mastered the techniques in this section. Also, keep a close watch for the hidden barb magnets used in conjunction with magnetic dice. Last but not least, you may try one of these trick cups. The cups feature spiral ridges and lips that will help act as a deterrent to some of the techniques demonstrated to cheat with the dice cup.